Shalom and welcome back for another amazing parasha adventure with Joseph, governor of Egypt in Mekits, which means, at the end of. At the end of two years, Pharaoh had a dream. He was standing beside the Nile River, and there came up out of the river seven cows, sleek and fat, and they began feeding in swamp grass. After them, there came up out of the river seven more cows, miserable-looking and lean, and they stood by the other cows at the edge of the river. Then the miserable-looking and lean cows ate up the seven sleek, fat cows. Then Pharaoh awakened from his dream and went to sleep again and dreamt a second time. Seven full, ripe ears of grain grew out of a single stalk. Then, seven years thin and burned by the east wind. And the thin ears swallowed up the seven full ripe ears. Then Pharaoh woke up and realized it had been a dream. In the morning Pharaoh was upset and summoned all the magicians and wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but no one could interpret them. Then the chief cupholder said to Pharaoh, Today reminds me of something wherein I am at fault. Pharaoh was angry with his officials and put me and the chief baker in prison. One night both I and he had dreams, and each man's dream had its own meaning. There was with us a young man, a Hebrew, a servant of the captain of the guard, and we told him our dreams, and he interpreted them for us. Then Pharaoh summoned Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it, but I've heard that you can interpret it. And Joseph said, The interpretation is not in me. God will give you an answer that will bring your mind at peace. Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh are the same. God has told Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears of grain are seven years. The dreams are the same. There will be seven years of plenty throughout the land of Egypt, but afterwards there will come seven years of famine, and it will be truly terrible. Why was the dream doubled for Pharaoh? Because the matter has been fixed by God, and God will shortly cause it to happen. So. Pharaoh said to Yosef, Since God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You will oversee my household. All my people will be ruled by what you say. Only when I rule from my throne will I be greater than you. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Here, I place you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and clothed him in fine linen with a gold chain around his neck and had him ride in his second best chariot, and they cried before him, Bow down. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I, Pharaoh, decree that without your approval no one is to raise his hand or his foot in all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh called Joseph by the name Zaphnaponich and gave him as his wife, Hosna, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On. And Joseph and Osnet had twin boys, Manasseh and Ephraim. Then Joseph went out through all the land of Egypt. Now Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, so Jacob said to his sons, Why are you staring at each other? Look, he said, I've heard that there's grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us from there, so that we can stay alive and not die. Thus, Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt, except for Benjamin, Joseph's baby brother. Then Joseph's brothers arrived in Egypt to buy food and bow down to him. Joseph asked them where they were from. They said, We are from Canaan. But Joseph said, You are spies. And they said, No, we are your servants. Joseph said, Prove to me you are not spies. You will not leave here until your youngest brother comes here. I will send you back, but one of you must remain in prison here. 
This will prove you are not a spy, and you will live. The brothers went back home and told Jacob all that had happened. And Jacob was greatly distressed because he had to send Benjamin with them to Egypt lest all his children die. The brothers went back and brought Benjamin with them. When Joseph saw Benjamin, he instructed his servant to make food ready for they would eat with me. Joseph sat and had a meal with his brothers. He asked them about their father, and they said, He is well. Joseph couldn't hold back his emotions and went into another room and wept. After Joseph washed his face and went back into the dining room, he instructed his servant to pack their packs with food as much as they could carry. But put my silver goblet into Benjamin's pack with money. In the morning Joseph's brothers set off back home. But Joseph said to his servant, Up, go after the men, for they are thieves. Joseph's brothers were brought back to Egypt. They asked what they had done wrong. Joseph said, Why did you repay evil for good? And one of his brothers said, Heaven forbid that we should do such a thing. Joseph instructed his servant to search their bags, and the goblet was found in Benjamin's pack, and Joseph's brothers tore their clothes and wept for grief. And Judah spoke to Joseph and said, How shall we clear ourselves? God has found out our wrongdoings. We are now our Lord's servants. This is the end of our parasha. We hope you join us next week for another amazing adventure.